And it is Saturday night. It is time for the Weekly Dig. I am so glad to be with all uh, here with you all tonight because, yeah, it is time, everyone, um, it being the time for the show. Uh, for those new to the stream, this is a live show. We dig into anime old and new. I'm Brent. These are my unreal co-hosts. Uh, John, say hi, John. Ooh, hi, John. <laughs> and Steve. Hi. Uh, hang on one second, Lane. I'll be with you one second. Yeah, uh -oh. Sorry, <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Um, it is Saturday night. And uh, before we dig in, um, how's your week been, gentlemen? Long. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very long. <clears throat> but I got to see Dune. Hey, was... nice. Excellent. Excellent. I highly recommend. Cool. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. Looking forward to that one. Same. My week's just been eating. Eating. More eating. Nice. Enjoying eating. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and catching up on anime. Ah, nice. Cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I finally knocked a couple things off a of Crunchyroll. Mm. I bought into Funimation because mm -hmm. I wanted to okay. see the Jobless reincarnation. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't, can't, you know, that's where it lives. Mm -hmm. I also right. want to watch Comey son. Well, I can't communicate. About that. I, can't, <laughs> I can't get there until I get to Netflix. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So that might be a wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to wait for a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to see how Funimation plays out after I finish what things are only exclusively Funimation wise. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, I'll be sure to. Uh, Tell you all about Come Can't Communicate and hanging over your head every week. So, oh. <laughs> nah. um, hey there, guys. Hey, Matt. Good to see you in chat. Welcome, welcome. Um, Brent, how was your week? Oh, it was yeah. a week. Um, unfortunately, I can't talk too much about it because some of it's work stuff, and some of it's just kind of personal uh, stuff, um, and just I, I, you know, stuff I can't talk about because of things. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it's, there's, there's been a lot going on. Um, as an example, on... Mm, one second. Um, that's bizarre. As a, okay. As um, an example, or for example. For example, right yes. Um, <laughs> so, my, the condo complex that I live in, there are the it turns out that the siding um, is not up to code. Like, Ooh. when they built it, the codes didn't exist yet. Um, uh, to, to, to make it out of code but as time has oh, gone God. on now they're like it, it needs to be in code and it's one of those things it's about like water leaking in and water leaks in so they need to you know a lot of these things you know if it was built before code it doesn't matter but because this is literally like causing water to leak into the building like okay let's fix this and get up to code so bright and early Monday morning a crew came out started setting up ladders and ripping siding yeah. off of the condo complex um and then putting up a whole bunch of um insulation and various you know stuff up there and Time then sheeting and blah blah, blah. yeah exactly uh, yeah. and then nailing new new siding on so it was very From quiet 8 a.m to 6 p.m every day while i'm oh. trying to work and teach people and have meetings and all that kind of stuff so that is one of many pieces of this week. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, it's okay. It's the weekend. Um, I don't want to talk about my bad week. I want to talk about a 14-year-old boy's bad life. <laughs> and uh, talk a little bit I here. I don't want to be a pilot. <laughs> Actually, Shut I want to talk about that. That robot, Shinji. I want to talk about that, because I think this movie does shift things around a little bit. Um, so... Let's start our dig tonight by analyzing um, Evangelion 1.11, You Are Not Alone, the first of the Evangelion rebuild films. Um, and it took me a while. Like I did not really realize that I went back to this. Um, uh, this movie came out in 2007. It's Good been Lord. that long. <laughs> and, and the final movie just came out this year. It's, it's been yeah. it's a wait. Um, yeah. So, yes. Uh, so, I watched 1.11, uh, which was the home video release, uh, which has a few extra things thrown in there because 
That's how you do things. That's how you market things in Japan. Is oh, I watch 1.0. Okay, so we may have something to talk about. We'll see. Um, there may be some differences. Uh-huh. In, in that. Or I might have nothing to talk about while you guys talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> Damn it. So yeah, so 1.0, for those not familiar, 1.0 is the original theatrical release. Um, they did a 1.01, I think, which was a later movie... Like six, like six weeks later, um, they did a, another um, uh, movie release, I think, and they got in, in tweaks and things by then. Um, mm, yeah. Just you know, corrections and fixes and such. And then 1.11 was the home video release, which adds, I think, uh, three minutes of, of extra little footage, bits, pieces. And, and apparently it's just like fleshing things out, adding, just, you know, kind of rounding out the movie, from what I understand. Yeah. Shinji's a woman, and he wants to, and she wants to pilot the Eva. Right. What, what much. the? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just changed everything. Right. Um, so uh, again, to be uh, to be clear, um, I I finally finished watching Evangelion TV. I think it was last year, earlier this year, huh. not that yeah. far, not, not that long ago. Um, having watched it originally, like twenty years ago, I don't know, whatever it right. was, yeah. about when it, when it came out over here. Uh, but, but, like, I watched the first just, like, six or seven episodes. So I never finished it back then. Um, so I finally got all the way through that. I have not seen Death and Rebirth or End of Evangelion, any of the other Eva movies. Um, Steve, what's your history with, with Evangelion? Uh, let's see here. I've, I've watched... Uh, well, I saw what we were watching tonight, and I don't remember quite remember which version it was at Otakon. Mm. I want to say it was... Probably what I watched on Amazon Prime, the one one point oh one. Mm. By the way, folks, aren't, aren't you so glad that this is very very crystal clear as to which version is exactly? Which? It's great, yeah. you know, you know, clear as mud. Like one mm-hmm. point one. I like like you should see me the, the other night. I was like, okay, um, okay, I'm gonna need to find this. It's probably gonna, wait a minute. There's like five versions of this. Mm-hmm. What the hell? So anyway, um, so I remember seeing it, but there were things that I didn't remember, like mm-hmm. the rainbows and. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I watched, of course, Evangelion, the, the, the original series, back in the day. I think and you mean Evangelion. 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 Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back in the, <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. And uh, Adult Swim and all that. Mm. And, uh, you know, of course, I, I am one of the, I am the faction, I am in the faction that had the, the following response on the very last episode. Hate you! <laughs> Hate you all! I invested myself in this. It was so cool. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? So yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I, like, yeah, I haven't. I don't think I watched Death or Rebirth. Um, and I think I watched the second one of the Rebuild series. I'm okay. Not one hundred percent sure. Um, and and but I, I totally love the fan, fan parody of Evangelion Redeath. Ah, okay. Which is what spawned uh, AMV Hell back mm, way okay. back when. Gotcha. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, you can find it on YouTube. It's quite hilarious. Cool. Cool. Uh, John, yourself? I, I think it was. Gosh, it had to have been three years ago. I think it was after Star mm. City, one of the Star Cities. Okay. Um, you had talked about some mecha stuff, and, mm. and I think David had done a mecha panel too. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Eva had come to, had come up, and I was like, you know, I've never seen Evangelion, so I should probably <laughs> sit down and watch this. And I got through the whole TV series, and just at the other side of it was like, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, I, I'll I'll give, I'll give the movie. Maybe the movie will help mm-hmm. me wrap my head around why I mm-hmm. don't understand why people like this show. And I mm-hmm. got done 1.0, and I'm like. Nope, still nothing cures this problem. <laughs> so I now I've watched the movie twice. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can't say it's I can't say it's really changed my opinion. Okay, all right. <laughs> like, fair. Um, I, fair. I, I mean, I really you know liked elements of it, mm-hmm. but yeah, sure. Uh, you know, the core core issue is mm-hmm. is story, father and son well, story. Just yeah. wait, <laughs> yeah. 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 Because as we get into later movies in this, it. Boy. Um, anyway, um, and for those not familiar, like the rebuild movies do go off in very different directions from the TV show. Um, yeah. But the first movie doesn't dramatically. Um, right. So this rebuild movie is pretty much a retelling of the first like eight episodes yeah. of yeah. original Evangelion. But let's talk about that a little bit because it opens with some of these iconic shots 
um, <coughs> of from the beginning of the first episode. Obviously, they've, they've all been redone. There are vastly more tanks, vastly more of everything in all right. of this. And right. also, the water is red. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on that? What, what were your reactions to seeing that the sea is red? Blood. Blood unscrewed up. Lots and lots of blood. <laughs> you know, like, a lot of people have died to make this area that red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was um, my first thought. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, yeah, it's interesting. The, the big fan theory around this is that uh, the Rebuild movies are technically a sequel. Um, because from what we, we know of some of the plot, uh, yeah. okay. um, this is all happening again. Yeah. Basically, right. Um, not saying that's that's true, but I think right, it's yeah. interesting that 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 Anno chose this particular color to sort of get that into people's minds, saying it's possible that we're, uh, you know, in a loop basically on all of these events. Um, and the reason I I like that idea is because again, I don't know that he is literally saying that, but it is such a thing to get fans talking about, and it also perfectly fits in. That's what Rebo is. Rebo literally is. Redoing it again, so it's kind yeah. of like that. Yeah, that is kind of funny. He would do that. Um, yeah, exactly. This this could be a post third impact storyline. It's possible. Um, but and and then we also see what's interesting is that I'm sorry, John, you're gonna say something. Well, I was gonna say in this beginning section too is like I didn't remember from the TV series. I don't think it existed in that. Um, there's a giant chalk outline. Yes, there is. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. I sorry, I had to laugh when I saw it. I'm like, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is where this angel like died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right here. Side of a, like, yeah. <laughs> this is where the wrongful shooting happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's so, like let's make like this half a mile big like chalk outline. Be like, mm -hmm. mm, yeah, I think that's where the where the murder occurred. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, really? You know, yeah, it's like, like, <laughs> it's, 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 awesome. <laughs> So what I thought of it as as one of those like Pueblo Indian or not Pueblo Indian but American Indian, um, you know, like the Nazca lines or something. Those, yeah, the, the how they made like the, the big fixtures and geoglyphs, you know, stand, geoglyphs, mm -hmm. and um, you know how some people think that that's alien. So maybe this was mm -hmm. a marker of the angels, mm -hmm. um, yep. you know, kind of a thing going on. And if you know, and when they showed the water being red. You know, if you haven't seen this before, then that might not mean anything to you, but just mm. something of curiosity of like, why is that red? Mm. To me, it's it's just kind of like, okay, well, we've killed an angel, mm -hmm. and we know that when the angel dissipates, it turns into a blood rain. Mm, yeah. So, did we just kill an angel? Yeah, and that's and that's mm. what that is. Yep, exactly. Um, and actually, might be. Oh, good. We don't know whether it's also to you know a toxicity issue too. Oh, right. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? It's like this could be an indicator. Here's a destroyed city, mm. and now as a result of fighting, all this water isn't just blue, lovely ocean. It's all just mm. this toxic soup. Mm. Weapons mm. have gone off. This thing has died, and mm. it's you know yeah. Help. What kind of ecological disaster has resulted from that as well? Absolutely. Um, it's also possible. And again, I, I I have deliberately not like gone into all of the you know. Here's what Anno says he, he was doing, because whoever knows. Um, um, but it, it's also possible that, um, um, boy, I completely lost track of what I was going to say, um, that the, um, exactly what you just said. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that, that thought at some point. It's going to come back to me, but it's, it's not there yet. Um, so spe speaking of the thought processes, um, for some reason, just now I got Red Red One by UB40 just popping in my head. Mm. <laughs> so um, Anna was listening to that. And was like, yeah, yeah, red, 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 red. Red. okay, we'll go with the red. We'll go with the red water. Um, oh, you, the, the chalk outline actually reminded me a lot of like the the certain giant, um, uh, the various chalk outlines in Britain, uh, yeah. where like Paleolithic oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. folks would uh, draw a giant chalk outline on a hill, yep. um, which again, t kind of similar to the Nazca lines, but more like clearly done by somebody as a symbol of a person or a thing. Yeah. Um, so who knows? Um, but, um, yeah, and so we, we see this stuff. What's interest, what interests me is that the, the visuals in, in the original TV show, while it showed things sort of falling apart and things, all, all the stuff underwater and so forth, it wasn't as chaotic 
as right. the imagery yeah. here. Uh, you know, where you see, uh, let's see if I can get a, a better shot. You have all the trains just sort of up like toys upended. Yeah. Um, all this stuff. And so very quickly, Anna was saying, I'm not doing a shot for shot remake of Evangelion here. Um, you know, I, I am changing things around a little bit. Um, that said, <laughs> um, a lot of it is shot for shot remake of the, the uh, first episode. And understandably, because it is iconic. Right, like, in, right. and a lot yeah. of it does communicate uh, these important things, um, with uh, with Shinji and and all that uh, all that good stuff. Um, and I think too, time. for people who, if you're going to have the Eva group mm. telling non Eva people, will be like, "Oh, this show is great, and it mm -hmm. was awesome, and you should see the movie." Obviously, this helps to be like, yeah. "Okay, let's seat these people who don't know what's going on yeah. in the world." And then now we can tell we can we we've gotten the people who are big fans. This will be familiar. People who aren't, they'll be engaged, mm -hmm. and then we'll move from this direction forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and like it, it's not like all of this stuff was thrown in there at random in the original TV series. Like it's all you know, it's all relevant to the plot. Right. <laughs> so right. that, yeah. that's important there too. Um, uh, yeah, and and you see, yeah, way more airships as well as before. Um, yes. Which, mm -hmm. again, it's like, we have the budget now, yay. Um, you know, <laughs> Japan has more than four ships in its Air Force, or whatever it was. Um, uh, but yeah, other, otherwise, very similar. Um, um, all the way through, um, with a few tweaks, which I actually really did appreciate, um, when the angel uh, reappears, um, originally it was just in a single frame of the one head and the, the other head kind of behind it in the TV show yeah. to indicate you're regenerating. Mm -hmm. And this is literally an animated shot of the second head kind of growing out from behind the first one to show it's regenerating. You know, when I first thought that the first time, I was like, why does it have two heads? Like, did it have one head before? Uh, what's going on here? So it's like, thank you for the extra communication there. Um, uh, yeah, and then... And when you're flush in the budget, you can do right, that. Exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then our first, I think, really major change, which is the, the car ride. Um, yeah. Because originally this is really a, a goofy scene where Masato is like, oh, you know, this is a new shirt, and oh, I feel terrible, and the goofy like jazz music is playing in the background yeah. as she's talking, and that's gone. Instead, she's just talking to Shinji about, hey, how you doing? Are you okay? And it really kind of drew into me how much Ano is, was kind of rethinking the relationships here where I think Masato is much more thinking, is, I think Ano is, is, is trying to further draw the line on how Masato is seeing herself as a mother figure for Shinji. Yeah. Um, and trying to do that mm -hmm. earlier on here uh, than she was earlier in the show, which again, I think was, was appreciated at this point in the story. Yeah, there was a lot less, like, it's a lot less funny about Misato. Mm-hmm than what I thought I remembered from the TV mm -hmm. series where it was just kind of like, yeah. oh, she's this carefree kind of person and it's, you know, she's not really very serious and then she gets more serious as things go on. It's like, yeah. no, she tries to be somewhat a little lighter for Shinji and, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to be somewhat helpful to him, but she yeah. is thoroughly through and through absolutely serious the whole damn way around. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I, yes, be, given the important role she plays, yeah, that actually makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I feel like that's that's a better uh, way of using her character than the TV series did. But, and, yeah. when, and when you have less time, you know, you, you can't show every single potential aspect of a character. Right. Yeah, that, I, I agree with you there. You cut through the treacle and get to the heart. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and then, again, otherwise, pretty much the same. And we get our Anna Green Gables reference there, uh, which I, I still love. Um, uh, well, they God redesigned is, is heaven and is all is right in the world. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, um, and we um, continue on through, and we get the yeah the, the reveal of Tokyo Three on, uh, underground, um, and then again, pretty much all this is pretty much line by line. Um, Have uh, I ever asked you before, Brent? Yeah. What the heck is the geo front? That's a Shinji's good question. Like, Shinji's like, yeah. it's the Geo front. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I forgot. <laughs> Every single time I hear that. Yeah. Never looking up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have no idea. Me too. Um, I assume it just means a, a physical location on Earth that they are using as a staging area of, of some kind. 
Um, I don't know. I always thought it was just the dome that everything is under. Okay. Yeah, yeah possible. Yeah, that's, um, I just, I just like the whole journey to the geo front, which mm. is also interesting, and in how they they went through the mechanics of that and and the animation of the mechanics, which I really oh, loved. Okay. 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 Um, um, a, a geo front is the publicly used term for a massive subterranean cavity. Uh, within the universe, so in universe, they, the the powers that be say we have these things called geofronts, which are these giant subterranean cavities. Of course, they're not natural. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. You know, the, 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 the government yeah. suggests that they're natural, but they're not. Um, well, yeah, that's that. They're... Not with that many layers of armor. No. Right, exactly. Right. Yes. <laughs> so we learned that. How yeah. convenient! We found a giant place to put a bunch of stuff, and it's armored. Yeah. yeah. This earth, Earth works like that. <laughs> totally cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the descent into uh, Tokyo Three. Um, um, I I agree with you, Steve. I, I love that kind of back and forth between the two of them, where Masato is trying to sort of understand Shinji a little bit. Shinji's very closed off, um, but they're, they're they're figuring each other out a little bit here. Um, and then we get uh, the, the 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 classic scene, um, getting the, the robot Shinji. I remember this differently. Um, the way I remember this is that um, um, uh, Gendo um, says, you know, get in, you will be the pilot. And Shinji goes, I can't. And Gendo just, um, oh, uh, Gendo says, uh, uh, Shinji asks, why did you bring me? Because I have a use for you. And then Shinji says, I can't. And Gendo just turns and says, all right, bring out Ray, basically. In this version, he goes, I can't, and Gendo goes, um, you will be instructed. It's like, that's an olive branch. Gendo's actually interacting with, with, with Shinji a bit more in this version. He's actually saying, no, no, like, I'm not throwing you in there with nobody. You know, there's a whole crew here. Um, I found that really interesting that already we're starting to tweak a little bit the relationship between these two. It almost makes Gendo lovable. No. No. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not even remotely. Almost. Not even remotely. Um, well, and also, one of the things I appreciate about this is um, originally when, they, when, when um, Shinji says, I'm not going to pilot... Ritsuko says, um, all right, well then, uh, prep unit one. Misato freaks out and goes, how can you do that? We don't have a pilot. <gasps> do you mean Ray? Which I always thought was a weird reaction, because of course she knows that. <laughs> like, of course she knows <laughs> they have a backup, and all that's gone now. <laughs> she just goes, she you know, yeah. turns and she goes, really? Like, are you going to let this happen? Like, are you cool with this? Um, so I'm glad to see that kind of reworked a little bit, to say that Misato actually knows what's going on. Yay! <laughs> She is kind of an important member of this team, yes. so she has been briefed yeah, on stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> totally. You know all those papers on your desk? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Does she does she necessarily know about the cloning tank? No. Well, <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, um, things are happening. Um, yeah. There's stuff are going, are on. going on. <laughs> Large quantities of tang are being made. Oh, exactly. I don't know where you're getting a robot. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite Eva AMVs is uh, set to Weird Al's I Think I'm a Clone Now. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm a clone now. Yeah, and of course all of <laughs> Nice. Um, uh, yeah, and again, otherwise very similar to the original um, um, sequence, Ray comes in. Now, I have a question for you all. Because um, they talk about this a little later on. Do you think Gendo really intended to have Ray pilot unit one. <laughs> no, this is no. emotional extortion. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just his character type to be like, oh, fuck, oh, you don't want to get in the thing? I'm going to send this injured woman in there mm -hmm. because, yeah. no, you know, was, she's yeah. going to die and it's going to be your fault, Shinji. Yep. It's yeah. like, this is just... Im Im look, look. Fatherly. Yeah. It's yeah. a very fatherly <laughs> loving moment. I, I was yeah. going to say, now we all know that Gendo, Gendo and Kari is just, you know, father of the year material. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Um, <sighs> but, but, you know, Shinji, uh, one of the things that got me in, in not a good way 
mm-hmm. was, and, and I know that it was pacing. It's not pacing. You have to get to the thing to get mm-hmm. to the thing to yeah. get to the thing. Right. And, you know, right off the bat, um, Shinji does his thing, just like in, mm-hmm. in, in the series. I don't want to get in. I wanted to go to town and get about some power converters. You know, he's doing <laughs> yeah. that stuff. And, you yeah. know, and he's doing it. And I don't understand. What, uh, you know, Why would you love me, daddy? Yeah. 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 You know, now he's about the daddy. For that. Yeah. yeah, now he's not the time for that. Yeah. But no, yeah, as soon as Gendo says, okay, bring Ray out. Uh, Ray out and and they're and they bring out on the stretcher she's like ah, ah, like practically screaming and mm-hmm. blood and just bandaged up and, and i love the look on on shinji's face because he knows at that point he's been yeah. blackmailed mm-hmm. he knows yep. it like you can tell he knows it mm-hmm. and that is like the biggest f you face mm-hmm. i've seen shinji do mm-hmm. ever <laughs> you know to his father's like yep fine Fine, mm-hmm. got it. Got the message. Get the girl back. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. but um, and it's rough. On well, her part too. Ray doesn't. Generally, Ray is a very flat effect kind of. Person. Really, because <laughs> yeah. that's just the way she is. Yep. And it's like, mm-hmm. I wondered when I when I watched this, and I mm-hmm. could, you know think back on having watched the TV series, like Ray's hamming it up. Oh, I don't doubt. I don't doubt she's injured. Yeah. I do not doubt that. But when do you think when Gendo Gen- ordered her to ham it up? I think he did because wow. when he says "get Ray," it's mm-hmm. not like they all stand to the side. Twenty minutes later, she comes out of sick bay. It's like She's "get really- Ray," and the door opens, yeah. and here she is. She's like, "Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh!" Trying to get up, and it's like, mm-hmm. "Dude, Ray mm-hmm. suffers silently like in the whole TV series. Yeah. She's relatively silent, whether she's in pain, whether you know whatever's mm-hmm. going on." She's very flat effect, and here yeah. it's just all of a sudden she's like, you know, Dame Edna Dench, you know, coming up out of there like Judy Dench, coming out like, oh, oh, it's so much pain. It's like, mm. yes, this is great because again, you're just putting that knife right in the shin. She'd be like, look, the injured girl, she's mm. dying. Are you gonna do this to her? You're like, no. <laughs> so I think Gendo planned it. Wow. I think he ordered yeah. Ray to do it. Wow. It was yeah. too she conveniently available. Yeah. yeah. She would have she done it. She would have done it. I, because she says later on, it's like, because I was asked to. Mm-hmm. Because Gendo asks her to do things mm-hmm. and she does them. Not mm-hmm. that specific scene, but she's right, referring right, to like right, piloting yeah. the Eva unit. Mm-hmm. Why does she why does she fight? Yeah. Because he asked me to. Mm-hmm. And it's like mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good call. It's a good call. Um, that's really interesting. Um it's uh, another lovely character trait. What makes Gendo Ikari so yes. darn huggable? And so let's let's right let's... around the neck. Hearts, <laughs> um, so hearts. Yeah, exactly, more like exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, So let's bring that up real quick. Um, one of the things that makes Gendo that made Gendo such a remarkable character at the time, uh, which I've shared with you guys before, but just for the kind of for the audience, is that Evangelion is very much kind of a commentary on classic mecha tropes um and in classic mecha you have the trope of the kindly father figure who builds the giant robot and hands it off to the protagonist in episode one um you know the the uncle father grandfather scientist guy who hands it off and gendo is very deliberately the exact opposite of that trope um and so it's 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 one of the reasons why he People, I think, in, in America, and people who aren't familiar with those tropes, are like, why is he so a jerk? And people in in uh, in Japan and others, like, they see he's a jerk, but they're not, like, screaming and yelling about it. Because they're like, oh, it's reversing the trope. Like, that's why he's that way. Um, so, Gendo is a lot. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a hard <laughs> character to sort of, you know... He's Walter White before Walter White. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, um, but I think that kind of helps to explain where a lot of these things are coming from, where they're going so hard into a hole territory for Gendo. Um, <laughs> yeah, they are. Because it's, you know, again, it's like, isn't that hilarious that, that this guy's a jerk and giving the, the mecha to the, the young boy? Um, Which I mean, I think if you're going to have somebody like, was it Tetsujin 28? Mm hmm. You know, grandpa makes the makes the the mm. fighting war robot or whatever, mm-hmm. and the kid ends up with a controller. Yeah. And it's like I liked the way that Gundam did it mm-hmm. because it's you know it's still the getting the robot. Yeah, right. But you know, it's like 
you have the creation of this Gundam and you know, you know, Amuro Ray where, you know, where the creation came from, you know, mm -hmm. how his father is, you know, intimately involved with the creation of this device. Mm -hmm. And he gets grief from like the military higher ups to get in the, get in the robot. Yeah. And it's like, so, you know, you still have the kindly sort of father inventor and then you've got other circumstances that intervene. It's like, well, Gendo, Gendo's just a guy. Well, He's a guy. <laughs> well, in Gundam, they want him out. Right, like yeah. the military is like, what the heck are you doing in, the, in this, this machine? Why are you piloting it? And everyone around him is like, well, everyone else is dead. <laughs> like, you know, so yeah. you better be the one. Um, one of the, the the difficult, one of the I would say weaknesses that Galleon has always had is that uh, is in this opening sequence where if they had better established that Shinji knows exactly what this unit is and means, right. he's read the newspapers. He knows if he gets in that thing, he's gonna die. And he knows that these things are um, um, a slim chance at best. Um, and yes, the Evas are technically like secret and so forth, but information is out there, right? The, the other kids in the class know this. Right, going on. yeah. Um, so the idea is that Shinji is. Um, the, the way I always interpret it is that Shinji sees this thing and he's like, I can't do that thing. I am not. You know, I refuse to to take on that job because I know exactly what it entails. Us watching it without that context, he's offered the opportunity to, to pilot this giant robot. And yeah, obviously big bad things are happening. But it looks like, well, why wouldn't you? Like, there, there's no reason for you not to. Um, so that is a, 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 a problem. Um, um, well, I think, too, when you have Amro Ray, he's watching... All yeah. hell-breaking loose. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's there's this, there, in the middle of what's going on, and it's like, presumably Shinji, when he gets there, wherever he has come from mm -hmm. to here, yeah. was not a giant cataclysmic war zone. Right, exactly. So right. it's, you know, from, at least from my perspective watching, and I'm sure a lot of other people's perspective watching, mm -hmm. it's like, here you got this kid who's come from boarding school. Yeah. It was like, oh, I've been off in the country in Hokkaido. I've been enjoying the snow. It's great. What's going on over here? Oh, there's a giant robot. I have to kill things? What? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. huh, okay. And further, like, he, he went from that. He was in the middle of a, a, in the middle of a fight there where things were crashing down around him. And now he's been taken down into the, you know, sub, sub basement of this giant facility where it's safe. Yeah. So... Okay, great. You're taking care of me, and everything's safe. Like, why would I now go back into the danger? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw the big thing that almost landed on me, and I watched it like crush a 25 ton aircraft thing. Mm -hmm. And now you want me to go after that thing that crushed the 25 ton thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let's not even talk about barely surviving when a sports car gets nearly nearly right. nuked by an N2 mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, what kind of mine is a nuclear explosion on it? <laughs> like, it's a hell of a landmine. Exactly. I love um, how Mazzano is going, oh, no, they're not going to use that. I would if I was Shinji, use, oh, you, you use what, 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 what are you talking about? Get down. And it's like, no, you know what? I'm going back to Hokkaido. Right. Yeah. I'm going to Sapporo until this is all done. I'm yeah. swimming back if I have right. to. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 and no. No, exactly. Um, uh, but of course, he does agree to go in, and we get a very extensive scene of them prepping the Evangelion and doing bolting things, geez, all the bolts sliding over here and everything <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, and again, this was an iconic scene initially, and a lot of that that kind of stuff is there, but it does go on for a bit. Um, and I do think, and this is one of those things where I think this is also a bit of Godzilla's, a bit of Godzilla fandom coming back in of all of the, you know, of you know, all the tanks lining up, preparing to oh, fire yeah, Godzilla yeah, yeah. and, yeah. you know, getting all of the, and we see this later, you know, uh, um, uh, you always have to have the, the, the one sequence where you electrify all of the electrical fences against Godzilla. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and all that, that prep work. So there is a little bit of that, you know, kind of the spectacle of all of the technology going on. Um, but rewatching, I was like, "Can we get to the fight, please? Now, can can we can yeah, move yeah. on a little bit?" Um, I get it. Well, this, I get it. Let's start throwing punches. Come on. Yeah. Well, and again, with all the money, you've you've mm -hmm. got everybody who's like right. the the super fan is like just just salivating in the theater while like, yeah, oh, look at that! Oh, that's so cool! Watch the thing slide for the button. The things come off. That's amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, fan kids, just yep. set them the back there. Exactly. Um, and then um, 
then the Eva puffs up, and uh, we get again, same exact sequence. Um, the only change here I noticed, uh, which takes a while to show up, is um, when the Eva goes berserker, um, mm -hmm. it's a lot more vocal this time around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in the TV series, it, there's a few groans here and there, but it is just, ah, like the entire time. Yeah. And they did, and they did away with the whole eating thing. The whole what? Sorry, eating thing. Oh, um, yeah. Was that? Uh, I was gonna say you might have to wait on another movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, um. Uh. Yes. Exactly. Um. Gotcha. Um. Okay. Yeah. Because I was waiting for that too, and I was just like, wait a minute. I thought I remember. Oh, maybe I. I should. I should remember later. <laughs> I'm not, I shouldn't be remembering that now. I should remember that later. Uh, yeah. So. Um. Um. But yeah, otherwise, fights. And then we have, we very quickly get a completely new scene. Um, well, new scene in the sense that this is in the series much, 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 much later. Um, Shinji in the uh, 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 train car, uh, talking to himself. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think this doesn't come in until, like, episode 16 or something in the original TV series. Yeah, it's a while before it, that yeah. happens. That um, thing happens. Which I think is it w was clever for them to go back and say, this is a really effective way of kind of getting inside Jinji's head. So let's start layering that into the story earlier on. Um, and I love how it starts by hearing uh, Shinji's mother and father talking about, you know, who's going to be, you know, is it Shinji or Rei, whatever. Um, yeah. And it goes on and it goes on and it gets weirder and weirder because they're referring her to her as Ayanami and him as Ikari and all these things like what the hell is going on and then he wakes up and you're like oh oh <laughs> it's not a yeah. memory <laughs> it's not a memory yeah <laughs> um yeah that, that, was, that was pretty cool um uh, and yeah then unfamiliar ceiling um uh and then we get uh the new conference room so no longer the holograms um, what do you guys think about that? I like the holograms. I did too. Yeah. I was gonna say it. It. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I just I'm just Eva is just a thing to me. So, <laughs> okay. uh, I, I liked some. I liked that there were differences that gave me something else to like focus mm. on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like sure. I, 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 I took what they gave me and said, okay, cool, okay. good enough, mm -hmm. good enough. I'm. I'm It'll keep me invested in another five minutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, and they're cleaning up. New suits, so forth and so on. Um, we do drop a few new things here, where, again, they're, they start to rework things. As I recall in the original, they're not talking about Lilith this early in the show. They're not talking no. about any of the their later plans. They're just basically, you know, uh, Gendo, keep doing your thing. You know, peace out. Yeah. Um, so again, I think smart to start weaving some of those plot lines in earlier on, uh, because again, partly you have the vast majority of the audience they already know. <laughs> There's yeah. No reason to keep it secret. Um, um, yeah, and then again, um, all of these sort of uh, connection bits as folks are starting to um, connect with what's going on, we get uh, Shinji going home with Masato. Not like that. But kind of, um, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that whole thing. I, I, I'm, I'm still surprised that I still got a good guffaw mm. over the can scene. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, yeah. Get there in a minute. Um, uh, as Masato more or less adopts Shinji, um, I still laughed over the, you know, let's go and stock up on food and they go to like 7-Eleven yeah. and it's like, right. Okay. Um, not what I thought. Um, uh, they, they rattle home uh, we get again the iconic um, rising of Tokyo 3 scene um, uh, in the sunset which is again gorgeous scene also important because these are CGI buildings um, and to the studio Kara showing off okay you know this is clearly CGI and how well can we make this integrate into the, the show yeah. um, I think this was a, a, a strong way of kind of putting that in there um, um, and then, yeah, then they go home, uh, Shinji crosses the Rubicon, uh, into home, and we get, yeah, kind of the one goofy scene with Masato, 
as you were saying earlier, um, where she's drinking. Um, we also get, I had forgotten about this, um, as Shinji looks around the, uh, uh, the whole uh, environment, um, he sees the block of ice and, uh, you know, which is fine. And then, Doritos! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Frito Lay paid for some product placement in Evangelion. Good to know. Good to know. And yeah, Kier- Kieran Kieran paid some cash into it. Too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, that's Sapporo, believe it or not. Yeah, oh, okay. You, yeah, you, okay. You, you move? I think it's Sapporo. Yeah, I think it is. Well, to say, the one where he's looking between the cans, it says Kieran. Oh, oh okay. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, Misato does the. Does as Misato does. I really thought she was just going to belch and still do the. <laughs> Yeah, really like, she's gonna make blah 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 blah. There you go. Cut loose, little Shinji. Come on. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah have a beer, sure. kid. Yeah. You're gonna die anytime soon. <laughs> right. Um, you might die in the morning, literally. Right, exactly. Um, good luck, Shinji. You've done well. I'll most likely kill you in the morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but meanwhile, here's my penguin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's Pen Pen. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, and then uh, Shinji Shinji pops up, shall we say, um, and uh, and and yells. And as I recall, and I'm I'm trying to remember how the joke ran in the original TV series. Um, uh, was it toothpicks originally? Um, toothpicks. It was toothpicks yeah. in the original. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, no, I didn't remember that. Part. Yeah. Um, just so you all know, wait for later on. Um, <laughs> the, the, the the joke comes back, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, different character. Good joke um, never dies. Exactly, yes. Um, but that is, that is you know, just... And I love that joke because it is an animator's joke, very much. Yes. You know, <laughs> playing around positioning and so forth. Um, and just waiting for how folks are going to react to things. Um, kind of like the Simpsons movie. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, um, going more into uh, sort of Shinji psychology... Misato trying to reach out to Shinji. Um, and then, of course, you, know, you did good, kid. Whack! Um, yeah. And down he goes in the schoolyard. This is, I think, one of the things that, that the movie suffers from, is that we see so little of his schoolmates. Yeah. Um, and so I think they do as good a job as they can, given the runtime. But it really feels like they kind of come out of nowhere. Um, you know, again, they kind of, you know, Shinji gets beat up. And we never really get any interaction with him and any of the other students. You don't really get a sense of, okay, does he know these people? Have they had any interaction before? You know, do they have any interactions later? Right. It just kind of feels a little out of context, unfortunately. Well, I, I mean, up to this point, I don't even remember... It. I don't remember anybody being like, okay, you, they talk about his apartment. Oh, you're in block six or whatever. You got a place mm-hmm. to yourself. Yeah. Oh, no, you're going to come live with me. Okay, mm-hmm. Masada, that's cool. I don't remember anybody in there being like, we've already got you enrolled in school, your ID is at home. Oh, good point, yeah. Or some, you know what I mean? It's like, they mention none of that, and the next thing you know, there's a kid, I, like, <laughs> I, I've seen it before, mm-hmm. but I had the same thought in my head when I got to this again, where I'm like, what's he doing at school? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's weird. Is, that, is he like, is somebody just, was he walking by, and like somebody's just kicking the crap out of him, or what's yeah. going, how's this happening? There's that one nanosecond scene where he's laying in the bed listening to his cassette player, digital right, cassette yeah. player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, oh, that walk band's worth a fortune oh, now. Fortune now. <laughs> yeah. And he's looking at his his school bag and you actually oh, see the, the good set, point. Says school yeah. transfer papers. You're right. So, yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, never then, that. mm-hmm. so that's the setup for the scene. But yeah, it's still kind of like, all right, you're right though. You're kind of like going, okay, does he walk in and everyone just kind of looks at him and then the dude pops up and pops him up? No, it's just, oh, okay, there we are. Mm-hmm. He's on the ground now, you know, yeah. done. And then the one other dude's just like, oh, don't mind him just because he caught you one. His little His sister, sister got, got hurt, got hurt yeah. in the fight. It's mm-hmm. okay. No, you're, <laughs> she's just like, I, I, that would have been me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we didn't have any context of what it was like. What was the introduction like? Hey, kids, here's a new transfer student. Mm-hmm. He pilots an Eva. You know, like <laughs> that big battle last time that destroyed like a quarter of the city. Mm-hmm. Introduce yourself, son. Mm-hmm. And then like then everybody's in there like we're gonna kill him. You know, they <laughs> didn't have that context. Yeah. yeah, and Shinji just being standing up there at the front of the class because actually, how would you say that? <laughs> Hi, I'm the harbinger of doom. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. you're all gonna die by the end yes. of this. So you yeah. know. Yeah. I'm not gonna bother you to get to know you. Yep. So, hi, I pilot I like the Eva. I'm so yeah. I'm so sorry I killed all your friends and family. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm going to sit in the back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like watching movies and sunset on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I like smooth jazz and ice cream. <laughs> oh, okay. And I like playing track 25 and 26 over and over and over again. Someone should totally do this. You know, he goes and, goes and does this whole introduction. And that was a wacky fact about you. You know? <laughs> well, I kill things. Yeah, pretty much. I don't want to pilot a robot because every time I do, it kills people. Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, well. No. Oh, you're him. Yeah. What's your favorite drink, Tang? Shh, not the liquor. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and so we just, again, more of the same. Um, we just kind of chug along through the story. Um, and then Ray finally shows up and starts talking to Shinji. Uh, to tell him that they need to go back to uh, to to Nerve, um, and uh, and this is where Shinji, I think, is a little bit of oh, there's a connection with somebody. There's somebody I can I, I can actually talk to that person. What a thought. Um, uh, which is where we get uh, the uh, the scene with the is the fourth angel, right? I think. Fifth? I think so. so. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, um, the the squid angel I always call it, yeah. um, um, and again pretty much pretty much exactly the same as they go all the way through. I'm trying to remember anything here really that was significantly different. Um, no, this was a little different. I I felt this time, and maybe this is just it's it's been a while since I remember this. Um, it feels in this version that Shinji is a little more together than he was in the TV series. I felt like in the TV series version, he was kind of dead inside, you know, just fire, fire, fire. And then he sees his schoolmates and lets them in and just kind of freaks out and goes at them. But in this, in that middle sequence, it feels like he's more thinking through the consequences of what's going on in the situation. Um, His facial expressions just seem a little bit more focused and a little bit more thoughtful. Um, Again, I don't know. Um, but it felt like he was kind of broken out of that moment. And obviously he's still freaking out in moments and he's still reacting strongly. Um, yeah. But it felt like there's a little bit more, okay, you know, I, I understand the score here and I'm reacting to the situation. Uh, I'm reacting to the, the variables in the situation instead of just this great danger in front of me. I don't know. Um, where was Shinji living before he got involved in, with Nerve? That's a good question, Captain Jones. I don't know where Shinji was living. Um, that is a very fair question. Um, yeah, I just presume uh, boarding school. I mean, I don't know yeah. whether they ever fleshed yeah, it out, yeah. at least in the anime version. Yeah, it, 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 it's certainly, it yeah, as far as I know, it's never, like, addressed in the animated versions. Um, but I'm, I'm sure there's some document somewhere. He lives in a place where there's a lot of crosses. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you go, Captain. A lot of school. duffel bags. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and so he takes it out in the last second, as, of course, he, he must, as a, a mecha pilot. Um, and Misato's pissed off at Shinji. Um, this is a scene that, and this is a whole sequence that I didn't get when I first watched Evangelion, why Misato was so frustrated with Shinji's behavior. Um, because he complied, um, and he's obviously having a rough time of it, but he's still compliant, and she's not happy about that. Um... And the thing is, he's having... And it's like she's angry at his emotional reaction to this. And the thing that he wants to run away and so forth. And I think... I'm not sure. Um, you could see this as a commentary on the post-war generation versus the following generation in Japan. Where Misato's perspective is we sacrifice everything for the good of everyone... And if you agree to do something, you do it. And you do it without complaining, and you are signed up for the job. And the fact that Shinji isn't wholly committed does not align with her worldview. Um, Whereas from Shinji's perspective, it's like, well, you know, I understand intellectually why this is a good idea, but just my heart's not in it. And I'm okay with that. That's just where I am right now. Um, but Masato just cannot see it that way. I don't know they'd be stretching. Um, but that's kind of what I got out of, out of that sequence. I don't know. 
It's interesting because I mean that that meshes up with what's going on in that scene pretty nicely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because I I never haven't seen it twice. I I was just looking at the scene like, huh? She mad that she that he he got the kids inside, so he yeah. saved them, and he still mm-hmm. won. Mm-hmm. Now mind you, we damaged the Eva again. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's as we learn later on, it, they do get damaged, and they do have problems fixing all the yes. parts of them, so, so that. You know, I was like, maybe she's just kind of pissy because he didn't, like, immediately yeah. comply, immediately do the thing, and yeah. then stop the angel, and, and now granted, she's upset. And granted, he like, com- completely ignored her orders for most of that battle. Mm-hmm. So there's some yeah. of that coming mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Yeah, but I, 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 you know, that easily could be what you're saying, Brent. That's That would make a lot of sense in that context. Yeah. Possible. It's, it's kind of like when a coach benches you because you didn't do what the coach said, even if, even if the coach is wrong. Right. Yeah, could be. I don't know. Um, um, but Shinji runs away. Uh, Boy, does he. Yeah. As Shinji is very good at doing. Um, um, as he just goes off place by Goes uh, AWOL. Yeah, exactly. To the pleasure district. But not really. But not Well, yes, really. that's the thing. Um, and I, I do appreciate the revelation on this, uh, where he spent all this time just kind of away doing all this stuff. Um... Uh, and then he finally says, you know, all right, fine, take me back. And you see all the men in black just arrayed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, the yeah. Guys come out. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. They, they didn't, no, that, that didn't happen. Um, uh, yeah. Um, my question is... Um, what would have happened if he had gotten a boat to Hawaii? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Um, Show over. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting for them to have a little, uh, you know... Um, uh, you know, electronics over their eyes, little red dots, you know, coming out. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Right. laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. It's Lenny and Squiggy again. <laughs> exactly. You guys found new work. Good for you. <laughs> thought Squiggy was dead. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. And so, again, just kind of more general stuff. We get, of course, we get the pool scene. Mm-hmm. We can't and I meant to. I meant to ask. Yeah. When Shinji gets to that, which it reminds me of, like you know, Akira esque moment when he gets to the roadblock, mm-hmm. and the bridge is obviously out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's not recent. Not presumably recently out. True. Yeah. But it's out. Mm-hmm. Which means if you're in the city trying to get to the outside world, is there an outside world? Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like that was the yeah. thought as he gets up there. I'm like, wow, you know, they plan to kind of catch him there, and I get, I get how this is. He can't get to the outside world. And I thought maybe the bridge is down because there isn't an outside world. Mm-hmm. This is like the last bastion of mankind, mm-hmm. and that you know, for some reason, the rest of Japan is like desolate mm-hmm. wasteland, and they, so they cut the bridge so nobody in the city can get out to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, that's that's kind of like what what it is in the original TV series. I mean, that's mm-hmm. actually when they go to the massive graveyard of all the Japanese dead, mm-hmm. and they pretty much say, I think, in the anime, some way, some mm-hmm. some form, I, I can't remember, but basically, Japan is really reduced to pockets here and there yeah. in Tokyo, mm-hmm. Tokyo Three. Yeah, yeah, that's really it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that the third impact was something huge because remember Mazato's story. In the yeah. television series, that her parents were in Antarctica. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that is that yeah, it? And at, they, at they, the, yeah. yeah. And that's when the how whole she thing goes little, off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, you know, she says, you know, half of humanity died just in the impact. You mm-hmm. know, much less everything that came afterwards. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Um, yeah, well, and you got the, the symbolism too. You know, bridges out, nowhere to go. Yeah, which I think also ties it into what's going on. Although he had just walked the left of the bridge yeah, being out, yeah, yeah, yeah. got it walked up the hillside and around that Here block. We go. But, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or we could have had a really short movie and have Shinji just stand up when he's on the other side of the fence near the cliff and just slip. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I did want to pilot it. <laughs> um, Shinji's dead. Okay, just get another candidate. Right, yeah. yeah. Is, there yeah. So is Asuka Langley available? Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, and for what it's worth, and for those you know, curious about like, you know, why, again, is Nerve spending so much time on this? Because no one can synchronize with the Evas. Um, you know, you, 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 like, Ray can barely do it. She's had like nine months of training or something. I'm, I'll bet it's nine months because that's symbolic. 
Um, yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll bet. What a pregnant con- yeah, con- yeah, comment to make. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, the, um, the, the, that's the reason why they're, they're not just, you know, letting him go um, or whatever. Like, they, they'll say you can go, but they don't really mean it. Um, you can go, but this leg shackle. No, no, <laughs> yeah, go, yeah. go ahead, Shady. But I'm, I'm chained. No, no, go. Exactly. <laughs> you're, I see you're not leaving, so obviously you're staying. But the leg shackle, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> Um, and then again, we get the scene with uh, um, uh, Gendo rescuing Ray, um, and it's still. I still cringed when the ejection plug ejected, um, yeah. and slams all yeah. around the room. And like, oh, oh, ow, ow, every ow. bone in her body. Um, yeah. Oh. Um, well, I also thought it was very interesting that when the Eva unit goes out of control. Mm-hmm. Which is one does of it scenes. does it just like slam its head in the wall? No. No. What's it start doing? It sees Gendo behind the glass yep. and starts punching the crap out of it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yep. I think there's a little something going on there. Yep. Uh huh. Hmm. <laughs> it's also it could be a jerk to to the AI and the humans alike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that that was well, Ray's comment about Gendo. <laughs> AIs. We'll get there. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, the other interesting thing is, that, as I recall in the original TV series, um, well, in this version, it punches and then ejects and starts h- hitting its head against the wall. In the original yeah. TV series, I recall, it's hitting its head against head the glass. Against the wall. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure why they changed that, because that seemed like a, a, a much more powerful imagery of that. Just like, yeah. you know, uh, but I don't know. Well, what... I mean, if you, if you, again, if you have the budget, you could do two things. You could have punching, then you could go over to it, bashing its head, well, no, versus the, like trying to, you know, cycle it down. And well, no, I mean, I, I think in the original um, TV series, they, they did both. Like it started it punching, punched, and, and then, then it, it did. The, I think did head, the head thing. Um, yeah. But I'm not sure. It's, it's a good yeah. point. I'm not sure if it, if it if it just did the head the entire thing. I, I don't know. Um, uncertain. Um, Oh, actually, no, this makes sense, because what's happening is, um, when it's, uh, it starts punching, and then, uh, Ray ejects, and now the Eva is just on autopilot, essentially, so yeah. it no longer has the focus, it's just insane, you know? No longer has the focus to kill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Ah, cool. Uh, great. Go, Ray. Yeah, exactly. Um. Raise a, a fine, normal, average 14 year old girl. Ha! Um, yeah. When she's off her meds, look out. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and so we get Misato and, and Ritsuko talking, and uh, Ritsuko's little little suggestion of, well, how, how, you know, it's a shame Shinji can't, can't interact with anybody. Why don't you have Shinji go over and hand over Ray all of her ID cards? Because yeah. um, we sure don't have time for that, do we? Um, it's a good on you, it's good. Coming with that, and, and and it's not foreshadowing of, of what Gendo said. It's time for them to meet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. That matchmaker in hell. Uh, exactly. Um, uh, so yeah, Shinji goes over, and I'm gonna have to fast forward over some of this stuff. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably because again, I don't think anything changes in this. Um, it's the, the same classic scene of, of all of that. Um, I do think they draw it out a bit more in this scene. I think they make it a little, even a little more awkward than it is in the TV show. Um, as Shinji is you know, nervously apologizing for all the stuff going on. Um, but I do appreciate how well this scene does demonstrate Ray's character. Um, that she, you know, you go to her home, and I, I, we will do that, where he enters her home, and it's just, it's a bed, and a fridge, and that's it. Pretty much. Um, Which, arguably, that would have been, if Shinji had not moved in with Misato, that would have been his place mm, as well. Mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Because like I really doubt yeah. he would have been set up with a, a swanky apartment. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it would have been as bare bones as that. Yeah. With a lot less bloody rags. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I gotta uh, tell you, if that had been me, if I had been Shinji and I walked mm-hmm. into that, mm-hmm. first of all, I wouldn't have like walked into the apartment right. anyway. 
mm-hmm. but you know walking in there and just seeing like the blood on the mm-hmm. on the pillow and the bloody bandages and something yeah. of a mess and how everything's dark and grimy and everything i would have been like oh i'm in the kill room i'm just gonna leave yeah. this shit here and I'm out. <laughs> just get out mm-hmm. yeah oh, what level of saw film is this <laughs> yeah, yeah. Much. i'm gonna get the hell out of there yeah that's the thing where it, are it, the clowns yeah um and that's what it feels like it's very very horror movie um yeah. uh which i think is very much the intent is that this is ray's life really um uh, and then of course she comes in and she has no real reaction to shinji um no new, real reaction to where his hand goes um no real reaction to any of that stuff she's just she just exists basically yeah except for the one thing so yeah except for the glasses indeed the glasses she cares about um just good they're filmmaking like a, they're up. like a gift yeah like a wonderful mm-hmm. gift mm-hmm. exactly yeah. a really creepy creepy creepy, creepy gift yeah um, I love the way that her apartment was slightly hazy, mm, which she was showering. Yeah, so sure, that's, sure. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But as, he, as she, she's looking around and you see the the box or the garbage can filled with the bloody gauze. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first thought that came to my head is like, oh, is this like the room like stinks? So oh, it's like kind of hazy. I'm like, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. A box of bloody bloody bandages yeah. and like blood on stuff it's like uh, oh this place must reek mm-hmm. yeah which and by the way care. yeah which by the way is why she's showering in the middle of the day because she needs that to shower can... frequently to wash off all of the ugh. Yeah. all the lcl and all all the blood mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> exactly um great scene just gotta say great scene yeah um uh and then things get interesting <laughs> as um, if they haven't been up no, no, really. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but yeah we get the uh, the the sixth angel which begins its penetration um, uh, uh-huh, yeah it's um, nine o'clock yeah. <laughs> they, they, they keep using the word so yeah. it's like they're, they're yeah. very clear it is uh, penetrating the facility um, it's overcoming their weaknesses with its yes. penetration. Yes, exactly. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. All right. I know. I, I see what you're doing there. Um, uh, yeah, and then... Well, I wonder if everybody looking at, you know, letting the original series looking at the storyboard going, oh, no, it didn't go again. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> you guys know where I'm coming from, right? <laughs> yeah, we got you. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, we can get away with this, right? <laughs> not gonna no, we that. see that. See that? How that went? It'll be just yeah. like somebody's drilling something. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, speaking really of which, twelve. <laughs> um, I don't know if you noticed. Um, we see more of Ray this time around. Um, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. We, we 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 see the entire side of her body, if you will, in that scene. Um, mm-hmm. So, because the movie, they can they can get away with a little bit more. It's like, all right, okay, we can. <sighs> we can tell what you're doing. It went from PG to PG-13. Exactly, yeah. Oh, very good. Um, yeah, and so Shinji wakes up, and um, we get a little bit more inside the the train uh, as Shinji starts actually, like, dealing with things. And again, it's why I like the fact that they're laying this in, is originally it's, obviously Shinji just got ideas bouncing around in his head. Now he's actually starting to kind of self-psychoanalyze uh, um, and asking, okay, like, Really, why am, why do I feel this way? Um, w- you know, I don't know that life's worth living, but why do I feel that? Um, which is a, you know, a fair question. Which a good PSA moment at this time. You're like, if anybody's having these kinds of thoughts, <laughs> please <laughs> consult with a Call this licensed, yeah. uh, <laughs> a licensed professional therapist. Exactly. We'd help you, you know, figure out what's going on. Yeah. Shinji could have really used Yes, that. very much so. Like, yes. <laughs> I guess you know, the, I, mean, I think all the therapists passed away in in first impact. Well, I mean, he, he, you know, if you want to say, well, children turn to their parents and they, they address their concerns, he doesn't have a mother to address the concerns with. No. Gen, Gendo is just not. He's not. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Misato, I, I, you know, to the degree that she is, you know, friendly to Shinji, that she's trying to be motherly to Shinji, mm-hmm. she also is a military yeah. commander. Mm-hmm. So right. she needs him to be in the right headspace to do the thing that he has to do yeah. so she can't really like 
gently walk him through an analysis as well of his own feelings. Mm-hmm. She just needs him to be put together enough to get into the damn machine. Yep. You, you, you so it's like, to... you know, all he needed in this, yeah. like, sort of short circuit a lot of this, like, mm-hmm. I don't want to have Like, mm-hmm. get a good military therapist. Somebody in there just to, like, <laughs> sit down and talk with the kid yeah. for a few hours a week just to get him some, like, help of going where it's going. And well, <laughs> Well, one of the one of the things you bring up a good point, John, is uh, one, and I totally forgot mm-hmm. about this because I don't remember this. It might have been, it might not have been. I don't know. Mm-hmm. In the original TV series, but she does the bright slap after he leaves the room after they have the talk. Right. Where I'm the I'm the yeah. lieutenant colonel, mm-hmm. and she just stands there for a moment. And she actually just does the swing. She does mm-hmm. the bright slap because she want that's what she wanted to do, but she couldn't mm-hmm. do it. But she was really conflicted because mm-hmm. the commander and her is just like smack the crap out of the kid. Yeah. Him, shape him up. Mm-hmm. And then the other part is just like, well, no, 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 I can't do that. I yeah. can't do that. Yeah, that, that's a great call out. I don't recall her doing that um, in the original TV series. I recall her just going, you know, damn, or something. Um, yeah. I needed that scene. Um, that's interesting. That's a really good call out. Um, another thing I noticed this time around, um, I think, originally, um, Shinji's wearing pajamas. Um, in the uh, whenever he's in the hospital, uh, when he wakes up this time, he's not. Uh, he's got a sheet over him, and oh. uh, yeah. And when he's talking to to Ray, and you see like he's got the the sheet is sort of coming down, and like he clearly doesn't. He's, he's clearly, you know, at least topless underneath that. And I actually really like that because it references back to the scene with Ray. Um, yeah, you know, well, I wonder if this a, is again difference between TV and movie. Oh yeah, I think it, like, I think it absolutely TV, is. It's like, oh no, he has to have jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's got to be wearing something. Mm-hmm. And here uh, they're like, no, nah, go commando in the in the bed. You're fine. Right, exactly. Um, uh, and of course, and again, who knows how bandaged he is underneath there? Who knows what else is going on under there? But I think kind of the implication is again, kind of um, Ray was in kind of ultimate vulnerability in that scene. Now Shinji has a chance to be sort of vulnerable um, and open uh, in that scene. So it's kind of a, a nice little, little shift around there. Um, um, yeah, and we, we get a little, little bit of interaction with Ray. Ray actually asks a question in this scene. Oh, yeah. imagine that. Why do you want a pilot? Uh, it makes us all feel closer to her by the minute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, she's a very warm person. Yes. Um, has everyone in Evangelion very warm people? She's she's delightful on a hot summer day. She is, yes, absolutely. She's so it's cold. cold in here. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, it's just right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and then uh, yeah, and then the, the the sequence. And again, I don't remember this being in the TV series where Misato goes to Shinji and says, "Let me show you something," uh, and takes his hand and takes him down to see Lilith. Um, I don't think that was in the show at this point. Again, it could be wrong. Not this soon. No. This yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. thought it was, it was in, much it's in, later. Mm-hmm. It's in the last quarter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's um, in the last quarter. And I think it's partly because, and you know, John, you're talking about, uh, and Steve, you're talking about Shinji's uh, 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 change in attitude here. Shinji is, like, done. <laughs> you know, Shinji has, before, like, he didn't want to do it. Now it's, it's changed into something else. Um, he yeah. is just... He, he has made a decision at this point. Um, and I, I love the symbolism of her taking his hand, um, literally taking his hand the way a parent would, uh, and taking him down to see Lilith uh, in the, the image of that. Also, I, again, one of those things, I, I think I noticed this time, first time, um, uh, when they open the door, there are little uh, paper charms on it that break. Right. When the door opens. Yeah. Um, so there's always a little bit of, of that going on there, of a uh, little, um, uh, little religious practice in there. Yeah, and so we, we see Lilith. So I, I will say, you know, given everything else going on, I don't know how much seeing Lilith like changes Chinji's mind. It's like, guess what? We have an Eva. Go ahead, enjoy piloting the, the, the giant robot. It's like, okay, like that's that's freaky. Yeah. Like I. Uh, um, but then when hey, she... look at the giant thing we crucified. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it cool? <laughs> um, 
What? Yeah, That's cool. I just I just want to cook. I don't want to fly, fly the robot. Wait a minute, hold on. We're mixing the dash go. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to cook. Damn it. Almost yeah, like it does. I love the lower end of Lilith too. Yeah. Where it's just like, yeah, just oh like, boy, yeah. were those people that were like sucked up into this and somehow weird thing? I'm like, oh Jesus. Yeah. Um, say what you will about Evangelion, you know the visual design of the show is definitely one of the highlights. <laughs> yes, it is. They know how to give you strong visuals. And it's religious subtlety. Very subtle. Very subtle. Yes. yes. Very, subtle. very, like very soft word. hand. On yes, that. yeah, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Misato does eventually get there where she explains that, uh, you know, yeah, you're all freaked out, but everyone here is basically doing the same thing you're doing. We're all in this together you know, trying to fight the angels. You know, yes, you're on the front line, but we're all part of the same sort of force doing this. I think that is what finally gets through to Shinji in that lovely little moment of, you know, he, uh, she grabs his hand, he finally reciprocates the, the gesture. Yeah, grabs back. Grabs yeah. back. He's like, aww. So sweet. So um, sweet in the, in the vision of death. Oh. Right. You know, this is Curse practically Eurocamp at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eurocamp, don't no worry about Oh my, yes, I felt this was healing and relaxing. Very much so, yes. Um, Welcome to this hell pit of horror. Yeah. And let's relax. Oh, that's good. Um, it's like a charm for a bracelet out of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but we get the, the, you know, the first real conversation between Shinji and Rei, uh, which this is one of my favorite moments, actually, in the original TV series in, in this, this period. Uh, because it's really the first peri- the first point where these two characters, who are obviously central to the story, uh, and obviously kind of the, the, the two big pilots, actually do have what amounts to heart to heart for these two characters. Um, yeah. But they are clearly like trying to understand each other a little bit more. They are reaching out a little bit. Um, like, Finally, thank you. This is what I wanted out of these characters. Um, a little bit, at least. They they're comrades in arms, so to figure out where they where they both stand in their comradeship. Yeah, and and to your you know to your guys' point, we do see an evolution here, where he's like you know I'm gonna die I'm gonna go. She goes no you won't because I will protect you. Like, oh, okay connection finally a connection, you know, um, and Shinji's like you know, why do you do that because and she as you said because he told me to. Oh, that is a connection to her and somebody. Right, so we're starting to see those connections between people. Um, yeah, Patrick, Which would have been perfect for him to jump up and be like, Really? Daddy told me too. <laughs> like, oh, <please. laughs> um, you follow orders well, right? Yeah. Never mind. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so many Dujinshi were born. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gendo was a man of particular taste. Yes, he was indeed. Very, yes. very much so. Um, and the less said about that, the better. Indeed. <laughs> and then, yeah, Patrick, we're going to be doing um, all four rebuild movies um, once a week for the next couple weeks. So we'll be talking about all the rebuild things. Um, so I'd love to get your thoughts. We'll have our own therapy session. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Although, quite honestly, I think Lane induces much more like my skull hurts. Mm-hmm. I've got to think about how this all yeah, connects. Yeah. It's just as like, oh boy. <laughs> just, just fight let's, thing. Let's get let's done with this. Sla- <laughs> let's slap your emotional centers around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun with that. Yeah, yeah. Let's, then we'll move on to something good like Eurocamp. <laughs> <laughs> so much to talk about yeah. with that show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, here's what we were saying before we have this thing. Long, very um, self-indulgent scene of all the power cables and uh, yeah. the electronics, and you know, oh, we're gonna get Godzilla this time. Done. Yeah, all the work done to show like D one, D two, D three, D four of like how yeah. deep cells are like connecting into the matrix to make the thing happen. I'm like, why did you do this? <laughs> Other than the fact that you just could, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it gives a nerd audience a lot of. Oh, did you see? What, what did it say? Did you see what it said on that one? Did it say anything significant? Like yeah. no. <laughs> but it's so much written on everything that yeah, I'm sure there are people who are like, oh, I wish I could stop yeah. the film and read it. 
And in fairness, there is a certain amount of world building to it where you see all this thing and think, okay, there must be, you, know, you can kind of imagine all of the ridiculous, you know, work required to build all these things and so forth. So, you know. The fleet of vehicles alone <laughs> yeah, bring the Transformers right. in. It's just like, wow. Oh. So the one road out of town that Shinji was on, apparently the rest of town's roads are all just fine. <laughs> yeah, better like, be. Damn. Um, and because Big Gun, that, that's, that's very true. Um, actually, that is a really good point. That, that, that is kind of what they're saying here is, again, it's, you know, this is not just, um, you know, another weapon. Uh, get ready, folks. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the biggest thing that's ever been seen in anything that's ever been big. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. Very good. <laughs> totally. I, so, okay. So this is like the difference between things and like Japan and America or whatever. Mm. You know how they go, oh, well, we're going to have to tell Japan to, you know, basically at midnight, all your powers can be gone. Right. We're not going to explain why. We're just mm-hmm. telling you now. Mm-hmm. So be prepared. Yeah. Can you imagine that happening today here <laughs> in America? <laughs> and how many uh, yahoos would be just like, mm-hmm. like no, no. Mm-hmm. I don't want to save the world. What about my right to my internet more? <laughs> Come on now. My OnlyFans account cannot go down. Right, though. exactly. <laughs> yeah, it would be like January 6th, all the hell over everywhere. <laughs> yeah. All the time. <laughs> like, oh, boy, here we go. Oh, boy. Because, like, cause like, you know, like all, in, the, in the shed, the Japanese are just like, oh, oh, okay, something's going on. Wow, okay, we should be worried. And you see the, you know, consternation on, mm-hmm. on the faces mm-hmm. and stuff, but there's this general acceptance of, okay, mm-hmm. the thing has to happen because we're dealing with all this stuff yeah so clearly yeah. This the is- collective good is served by mm-hmm. this despite yes. the individual inconvenience mm-hmm. right i i know How culturally that, right? significant huh <laughs> <laughs> really but you're absolutely right steve yeah. there would be, <laughs> be mm-hmm. riots in the u.s yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. um you want to wear a mask i will burn down this all right country. all right all right <laughs> can we move on i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. thank I'm you kidding. um uh, yeah, and so one of the things I, I do like about this fight, um, which is a, a really well thought out fight yes. um, in, in many of the, the, the structures, is how different the angel is. Um, yes. You know, it, it doesn't, it's not like a, a being or a creature, it's just this, this shape. Geometrical thing. Geometric sh- um, shape, just constantly reconfiguring itself. Um, and again, CGI. Um, and a good example of where it's like, okay, yet obviously we're gonna do CGI for this. I love the critical hits mm. when it would take that critical hit, and then the whole thing would be like, ah! yes, you know, it just, yes, and then it would collect itself again. Mm-hmm. Yep, totally. Well, it's also very interesting that it's like the other angels, like the first angel that you get to see, it's like mm-hmm. walking through the city, so it's mm-hmm. knocking things around, destroying stuff. Mm-hmm. The big squid angel. It's, you know, same kind of thing. It sits up and it's got the little fingers things and it's, mm-hmm. it's presumably squishing things. Mm-hmm. This thing just glides in. Yeah. It doesn't knock any buildings down. Mm-hmm. It doesn't laser anybody on the ground. Nobody's getting, like, fried with microwave radiation. Yep. It just wanders in mm-hmm. and just hangs there. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, I'm looking for What's the, the purpose? Thing, found the thing and yeah. now we're going to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. we'll burrow down to it. It's like, you know... It's it's a it's a different type of angel. It's yeah. specifically doing a specific thing. It doesn't mind anybody else around yeah. the city. Yeah, for, for me, well, this is okay. No, I was just gonna say it's just like the angels who goes, you know what? Let's do the big thing first, and then we can kill everyone else. <laughs> yeah, that are yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's be focused. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, well, for me, this was when I I really realized that Evangelion's approach to kind of mecha and the stories they were gonna tell was innovative um because again it's not monster of the week it's not okay and now a lion shaped thing and now a scorpion shaped thing right you know right um power ranger right exactly yeah Uh, (laughs) um it's uh you know this is just completely you say completely different not only just visual design but also approach to combat um and also just like really smart we're like no i'm not designed to fit in streets i'm not designed to do those things i am designed to absorb power and dish it back out that's what i do and it's gonna do that thing um um and did did, did they ever did they ever say in the original series because i don't i don't remember yeah we've now seen this is now the third angel that showed up 
<laughs> it, 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 enter, it enters from like stage Four, right. Or fifth. Yeah. Well, I think I think this is the third. This is the third fight. So we saw the walking yeah, yeah, yeah. one, we saw the squid one, and now we got the we got the diamond. Yeah, yeah, this is the third um, one in in series. Yeah. In series. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just enters stage right. It just sort yeah, of it's shows just up and kind of waters across. Mm -hmm. And it's like I don't remember in the TV series whether you know they talk about the you know third impact, mm. second impact, mm -hmm. first impact. And it's like, and you know, you get to see mm -hmm. when Masato is talking about her parents, you get to see what an impact looks like. But mm -hmm. I don't remember particularly being like, how does the angel show up? Oh no, that that, that is something they, they talk about in the TV series. That no, they just appear out of nowhere. Right. They, they um, yeah, but it's, they, they, yeah, it's like, they just, just like, suddenly they just materialize, yeah. Yeah, like in the much. woods outside of town, and then just mm -hmm. wander in. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. that was one and of the things I wanted to see was like you know mm -hmm. I would even have like have accepted like a teleport thing where it's like mm -hmm. you know, like see the sparkles and yeah. also there's an angel be like oh wow that was where it come from you know but every time you see the angel it's like enter stage right yeah doop, 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 there. there's an angel mm -hmm. <laughs> can, can you imagine just being living a life like that where you're just yeah. like in the hall in, in the house just right outside of town you're brushing your teeth it's eight o'clock <laughs> in the morning and you're thinking. Got to get to work. Got to get the nerve, and then you're just and then whoa, 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 whoa. And you're like, <sighs> no coffee for me. Got to go. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we're doing this again. Are they going to set the N N two mine off next door? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. Yeah. Um, Where's that N two mine, and 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 how's this going to impact my having children? Oh, right. Yeah. Mutant, mutant babies. Yeah. yeah. Babies. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that again they kind of subvert expectations that. Shinji misses. Um, and in that classic way, it's not that he screws up and like fires off. He just didn't get it exactly dead on center. You know, and it just, of course, like that happens, you know, um, that you, you're not going to be able to hit it exactly yeah. right on the first time. It happens in every other mecha series when push comes to shove, you know, we take it out in one hit. Um, well, didn't they know. say it's like, oh, you know, you're gonna have to calculate for like gravity right. and curvature and blah 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 blah. The computer will take care of most of it, and you know mm -hmm. that that should assure it. Mm -hmm. When he goes for the second shot, they actually you could hear them say in the background, "Yeah, pilots go on manual." Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, Star Wars. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You can't, you can't use the targeting computer mm -hmm. to hit the exhaust vent. Yep. You have to use the force, mm -hmm. yep. and then you know, hit it with a photon torpedo. It's like, ah, I got you. That's how Shinji's using yep. the force here, is it? And, and this is where I started to sort of stand up and cheer, um, uh, frankly, because this is where Shinji gets in the, gets in the pilot, gets in, gets in the robot, basically, where he's yeah. like, okay, no, I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to, you know, clamor up, grab the gun, fire it. And I love how, um, and very much to that point, um, you know, Ray jumps in front of him, has the shield, he's targeting, and we even have a, you know, stay on target, stay on target, okay. come on, come on, um, and, it, like, Shinji is suddenly, um, looking forward to firing the gun, right, um, and not in a, like, eager in the sense of, this will solve the problem if I fire the gun and take out this angel, um, and just seeing that determination on Shinji's yeah. face and seeing him come to that realization as a character was just, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and again, there's some of that in the original series, but um, seeing it communicated so clearly here was very, very um, uh, nice. Not very as nice fun. as seeing all the blood dripping down on Nerve HQ, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the river of blood. Can you imagine having that smoke break? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to be back. Where are you going, Tim? <laughs> uh, I'm going to change my uniform again. Huh. Another angel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Must be a... Yeah, um, oh, what, what, is, what is the thing? Um, someone's got a case of the Mondays. Um... <laughs> I'll punch you in the head. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and again, this is one of those things where um, just the, the the strength of it really, really came back to me when Shinji goes over in Evo 1 to pull out 
uh, Ray, and he's taking the knife and like the the bone and sinew sounds of him ripping yeah. into Evo uh, Unit Unit Zero. That yeah. that was some good audio engineering. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, and again, so. it just really drives home the what you're seeing as a giant mechanical machine really is not a giant mechanical machine. Yeah, you got it with the screaming Eva, yeah. and then you get it with this sinewy, gooey, human-like hands. Yes. Where it's like, ooh, Thanks. wow. Big, big step. I, I, you know, I started laughing when I watched this just because I, it's not meant to be laughed at. Because you were yeah, a sick I, man. I, <laughs> I need help. But... Yeah. Um, but you know, as he just you know, he's trying to dig the mm. the thing out, mm. and you hear this one in the gristle and all that stuff. And I half expected to hear Shinji just humming a tune like like he was just butchering out <laughs> the music. Like, <laughs> this little piggy goes to bar. Oh, this little piggy piggy comes to <laughs> there we go. All right, here's the tender boy. There we go. Yeah. There's an AV idea for you. Um, Talk about bad robot theater. Anyway, um, <laughs> and, Kid, kidney. Oh, I'm digging too, too, the too low. Okay, <laughs> let's go up the top. Um, it, you can't just imagine that the actual probably what they want to do is this. He's digging it out and he just pulls on. He goes, "Oh, what the hell is that in there? Mm -hmm. Is that supposed to be there? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> does, does my Eva have one of those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um, and of course, the father like son moment once he gets the capsule out. Yeah. Psh Mm -hmm. yeah. door. Just doing all the all, all the uh, the references back, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and having this very anime moment, let's be honest, of Shinji breaking in and saying, uh, uh, "Don't say to me, um, I have nothing else, and goodbye." You know, don't leave me with that. That's unfair, basically. Um, and uh, and then of course Ray saying, "What should I do?" Uh, and Shinji asking for a smile. Um, and she one. smiles. Yeah. And I was just totally creeped out. I'm just like, oh god, <laughs> she's going to do whatever those two say. Oh, <laughs> and again, you know, do Shinji. Um, you're, you're a Gendo's son. I will obey you unconditionally. Uh, just, yeah. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. not what we're Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, know, you know, just just as a practical aspect, she, they've just drained the LCL out of that yeah. like capsule. Mm -hmm. So when he pops the door up and goes in there, she should be probably on the floor like retching up mm -hmm. LCL as she's trying mm -hmm. to like fill her body, you know, yeah. with air. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. well, well, she's so give me a smile. So, <laughs> 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 well, she she's so just like non-emotional. Whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, no! Oh, Here's man. some nightmare fuel. Yeah, uh, um, it's running out of her ears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's pouring out of her nose. <laughs> oh dear, I have to do that now. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, and it's not just saying it, you know it's it's great seeing because I, I like the fact that the show doesn't like scream at you. The fact that Shinji's doing the same thing, exactly thing as his father did. That Shinji is doing that for, and it's a good example of of effective of writing, where he is doing that not purely as symbolism. He's doing that because the last twenty minutes have been establishing why at this moment he would be climbing out, trying to right. get to Ray, and doing all those things. It's a very motivated scene. It's just showing that these two are not that dissimilar. Um, in in, in the, the, Unless it's organic to his character arc. Exactly. Yes. More yeah. than it is just like, oh, he's a little Genda. Right. Yeah. No. 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 no, no he's yeah. Not. Yeah. But no. He's not. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we don't want to have any more elevator scenes mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how tall is Shinji? Jesus, everyone is taller than him. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a, he's a small. He is very small. He was um, raised in a very small box. Yes. <laughs> Oh, speaking of boxes, is that what that thing that that kid crawled out of at the end? Oh, it's it's, it's a box. It's a box mm -hmm. on the moon. He was in a box, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like, and like, wow, we're going to through some very very psychological trauma. Yes. Hi, I live in a box on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, let's be honest. This that is sounds like a fun kid show. <laughs> yeah. Walks on the moon. Let's go talk to the rabbit about making mochi. Oh, <laughs> what a cute, endearing show. Now I want to watch that show with this host. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the other side of the moon and talk to the rabbit. That's right. Oh yeah. <laughs> so let's be honest. This is pure fan service. This whole scene is pure yeah. fan service. Everyone knows who this character is. Everyone's wondering who this character is He's going back. So in the very end, we tease him. He shows up completely naked. Okay, yes. You know, half of the audience squeeze. We gotcha. Yeah. Um, but not completely unrealistic given everything else going on in the story. I get it. Uh, but it is kind of funny. You know, this is clearly Adam going, eh? 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 You know? <laughs> You're going to talk about this on the way home, aren't you? Um, come see the next film. Come no. see the next film? Um, yeah. And then we get, <laughs> it's not what you think. No, it's not. It is it. Um, and then we get um, Hikaru Utada's beautiful song, Beautiful World, um, playing over the end credits. And full props, full props to the makers of this for doing a next episode preview at the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly the style, and, same same music. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I was going to say was that you needed that because by the end of it, mm. you're just like, oh, I'm so emotionally traumatized. I'm never watching this again. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, hey. Yeah, exactly. Gosh, <laughs> hey, there's more. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right. Um, and, and again, very smart because not only he doesn't just go back and do it, he says, and Unit 6 descends from the moon. What? Excuse me? <laughs> what? I'm what? sorry, who? <laughs> Um, and you see all these characters, you see all this stuff going on, and we'll see if we can get, um, because this is one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, thank you for doing this. Um, it's going to be hard to find, yeah, Shinji, Shinji going nuts. Um, um, <laughs> Again. As, as Shinji is wont to do. Um, and, uh, because we, we do get a, a tease in here somewhere of, uh, of Mari. Um, oh, you yeah, see her Mari briefly. Illustrious? Yeah, Mari Illustrious. <laughs> Um, nah, it's not going to show it. Anyway, um, but, uh, yeah, so you, you see a little bit of, of Mario Lester's in there, which I was like, ah, good, good on you for, for, for getting that in. Um, <laughs> Billy Mays jumps in, but wait, there's more! That would be awesome. <laughs> um, they should do that. Um, but wait, there's more. Yeah. So, I had this question about Star Wars Episode Seven. When fans complain about episode, Star Wars Episode Seven. um... Oh. Um, because so many of them complained that it was exactly like episode four. Um, and that it was, um, uh, you know, they, they, were, they were just going back and rehashing all those things. And my question was always, why did you think they wouldn't do that? <laughs> right? Like, this is the, the, the fans <laughs> wanted nothing but something that felt exactly like the original trilogy. So, of course, they're going to go back right. and do that. Like, you, you may not like that, you may not want that, but it's not surprising that they went back to, to make it match those things. Rebuild 1 is clearly, okay, here's episodes 1 through 8 of Evangelion. Do you think that was the most effective choice for this movie? Would you rather there have been more new things? Would you rather they have gone in different directions? Or do you think it was smart for them, again, just partly from a marketing perspective, to say, first movie, let's make it comfortable, let's make it familiar, we'll change a few little things. What do you think? I think that's probably it. Because I think that it's, it, you know, over there in Japan, this is a thing. Oh, yes. So, you know, this is a thing. This is a real thing. And people know it. It's just like, how here in America, the rare person who has never seen Star Wars, any Star Wars movies, know what that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's right. just no two ways about it, and there's a general knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're being introduced to this, if you're tr if you're being reintroduced to to this, it makes sense to have something that's new-ish, mm -hmm. <clears throat> introducing new things in a way that's just okay, we know these things happen, but here we're working in these new ideas or just this new person. Mm -hmm. So it's not a totally new thing because the other part of it is is that, you know, the fan, the actual fans are going to be wanting to see us to your point, which is, mm -hmm. 
you know, we want to see that. We yeah. want to see this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. And that's going to keep us, once we get that, then we'll keep going. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you go into the other rebuilds, um, you can expand on those differences a little right. bit more. And you're giving them improved animation, you're giving them improved, right. like, just general feel, look, everything to it, that it's like, okay, yeah. everybody who wants something familiar, the story is familiar, but, you know, you've graphically upgraded things, so it's like, oh, cool, this is much you know, more eye candy to look at, this is great. Yeah. And like I said earlier, it's like, you know, people who heard of it but are not immersed in it, they can still, this is an easy entry point to get to. The, the hardcore mm -hmm. fan is going to love the cleaned up look and love more of the, the action things that are happening. Mm -hmm. And the you know, casual viewer who just walks into the theater is going to be able to follow the storyline at least to the degree that you know you can hook them in for the next film. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Um, and as Patrick was saying, given how, <laughs> how, how far third and fourth uh, movies three and four go, um, Getting them comfortable at the beginning, I think it was wise, because um, this, this this becomes a roller coaster from what I've heard. Uh, definitely, movie two is uh, starts to starts to diverge in dramatic ways. Um, so, John, you said that um, this movie didn't really uh, change your opinion on Evan Galleon or your your kind of your perspective on it. No, I I felt having watched you know the entire the TV series, mm -hmm. I just. Shinji is just not a character I enjoy. Fair. Yep. And it's as a result of that, when I watched this film the first time, I was like, okay, I kind of liked the way that he, they were not just hammering constantly. I don't want, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Like, okay, shut up. <laughs> so I, I liked that they sort of dialed him down a little and gave him like a little bit more, you know, connectivity with what's going on that you could be like, okay, now he's starting to dawn on, he doesn't want to do the thing, but if he's going to protect Ray mm -hmm. and he's going to protect people, like his classmates, these folks around him, he has to do a thing and the, the a thing is the robot. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I felt better about it, okay. but I just, I, I, Eva just never motivated me exactly. in the same way. Yeah. It's like, you know, my, my big robot is Macross first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then Gundam's after that, mm -hmm. and then Eva is just sort of somewhere out on the on the horizon where it's like I just I I, I find the bio element of the mm -hmm. Eva units mm -hmm. to be curious mm -hmm. that that got that was very interesting to me. Yeah, but for so much of the series, you don't you don't really get a good solid answer out of the reason for that until you get later into it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like this, you see, there's biological yeah. elements to it. But you don't really have like good reasoning behind it. It's yeah. like I just like you know repair the machine thing, and yeah. you know you see all the gears and circuits and stuff, and mm -hmm. you know it's like I didn't get that out of this. And yeah. it's like okay, mm -hmm. Patrick, I want to come back to that in a, in a second. Um, Steve, how about you? Like, did this movie shift your thoughts on Evangelion at all? Um, <clears throat> well, like I said, when I watched the the, the television series, I was vested. Like mm -hmm. I want, mm -hmm. I mm, watched it. And when I would watch it again, I watched it. I even forced myself to watch the last episode. <laughs> and that's, you know, the, the strong, you know, all joking aside, the strong reaction I had. But <laughs> The end of the... Yes, you the, did. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, slow clap, yeah. <laughs> I, at first I was like, I, I'm going, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Congratulations, <laughs> you watched the last episode. <laughs> uh, Good for you. You know, oh my god, I'm on the beach with the comatose girl. Okay, no. <laughs> so, um, so you know, so when I'm when I watch the rebuild movie, mm -hmm. even in Otakon, um, yeah. what I appreciate, what I got out of it mm -hmm. was, John, you said the cleanup of the whole thing, mm -hmm. the, the whole cleanup, and the understanding that we're going to do things a little bit differently, mm -hmm. and we're going to go in a couple different directions here, and it was just pleasing. Again, to the eye, the story was fine. It didn't change how I felt about it, really, mm -hmm. per se. Um, I still felt Shinji being Shinji um, mm -hmm. through this, but I just felt because it was moving form that we could condense it from about yeah. all the episodes to <laughs> to this one part of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, but and and you know, just just like I said, I just loved the mechanics of it. Mm -hmm. And and the audio was, you know, mm. John, uh, um, Brent, as you said, 
um the you know, audio is just amazing i actually I actually this time around i actually sat there and listened to the whole song at the end of, at the yeah because mm -hmm. it yeah. was i really enjoyed that song yeah. I forgot how good that song was. i did too it, well and um when they announced the movie so just for me um i didn't really watch any of the trailers and then he did one trailer uh which was um announcing that song for the movie and it was a trailer for the movie with, with movie footage set to that song and so my memory like my my memory of the rebuild movies and kind of being really introduced to them visually is with basically an amv set to that song <laughs> as the original one of the original <laughs> trailers of that and just the imagery of that just come flashes into my head every time we hear the song of going like that's what shinji looks like that's what the, that oh oh okay mm -hmm. oh i'm interested um, so yeah, great song, great song. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, very much like, like, like you guys, uh, this first film, I was like, okay, cool. They're readjusting a few things. Um, not a, not much to decide yet about what they're doing in terms of story wise, but I, I I'm glad to see this is not going to be a, a, a direct remake. Um, Patrick Haggerty in the chat brings up a really good point, um, to what you were saying earlier, John. One of the difficulties with Evangelion is you don't have a character to root for. Um, you know, maybe Masato. Masato definitely, I, w I would say, is the most sympathetic character in the show. Um, and boy, does she have a happy time of it. Um, uh, and I think that is one of the difficulties of the show, is that, you know, I can't think of a character in Evangelion that I empathize with if that's the right word, um, that, that I root for. Um, it's just not that kind of a show. That's, that, that's not how it's structured. And it does make it really hard to get into. Yeah. Folks. I, I will say that one of the burning questions that I have is, mm -hmm. what happens to Pen Pen? Because, uh, you, you know, you, I just assumed that he just got whoops, blown <laughs> up. Um, blown up by everybody. Uh, or, you know, all events going around, you know. Pen Pen's actually Pen God. Oh, stop okay. reading my damn mind. <laughs> okay. I was just about to say, well, you know, if you actually read some of the subreddits and stuff that discusses this pretty pretty deeply, Pen Pen's God. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> well, um, now I'm just going to sit here quietly. <laughs> Pen Pen's a symbol for Moses because Pen Pen leads people out of, of darkness <laughs> into the on. light. Um, and, and he represents the duality of, of, of nature because of the two words in his name. Um, and, uh, yeah, we could go on. Uh, and Moses was a flightless bird. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Who lived in a swanky refrigerator. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Think about, yep. think about that. Yes. Think about, if you think count the meaning of that. Right. You know, just, just think five letters in Moses' name. Five plus one is six. Six letters in Pen Pen's name. See, it all comes together. Dun, dun, mm -hmm. it, it's all yeah. so, <laughs> the Godhead three and one proof or six proof. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, three and one pen pen. That's right. Three and one. Yeah, yeah and three and one. Mm -hmm. See, it's the Trinity right there. The whole thing. Yeah. This is what's sad. Is this is how easy it is. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody out there right now is listening in on this, going, "Oh, oh yeah, Old <laughs> Testament. I gotta look this up in the Old Testament." Oh boy. Uh, penguin, penguin, penguin. Yes. Man, the old, new. Where is that? <laughs> oh dear. Um, but yes. But I, I will say, like when when I finished rewatching this, I, I was entertained. Like I watched it all the way through. Mm. Like I wasn't like, oh, mm -hmm. Evangelion again. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, like it still has that power to draw you in and uh, and engage you um, for the full, um, you know, uh, nearly two hours. I think like an hour and forty yeah. minutes of the film. Um, you know they did it. They definitely did it. So, um, cool. So yeah. So next week we'll be looking at Evangelion two point two two, and uh, that will be the 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 next little bit of the plot. We will get to see Oscar for the first time. Uh, we will get to see uh, the other new pilot uh, in that episode, um, that that movie, uh, which, as you all know, I have a bit of a fondness for. And um, yeah, and we will we'll we'll see what you all think about that that next stage on the Evangelion journey journey until the end, the final completion, the final movie, the final piece of media for all time. 
you know, no, that fourth re- reboot like, movie. <laughs> until they get more funding for a fifth <laughs> film. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, um, we'll we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, but uh, yeah, that'll do it. We're gonna take a quick break every just a few minutes, and we'll be right back to talk about some more modern anime and the latest Ooh. anime news. So we'll be right back. <laughs> 